Hi, welcome to Learning and Skills. We hope you enjoy studying with us, but so we can give you the best learning experience, I'd like to introduce you to our online teaching platform, Google Classroom. Google Classroom is part of a G Suite for Education, and along with other applications such as YouTube, Google Docs and Google Meet, it will allow you to integrate your physical classroom along with your virtual one. You'll be able to collaborate and share with your tutor and classmates like never before. Your tutor will be able to give you assignments that you can complete and they can mark them in real time. But don't worry if you've got limited technical abilities, we are here to support you along the way. So let's get started. When you sign up and complete your enrolment on a course, we will email you your new login details and instructions via your personal email address so that you can join Google Classroom. First, in any web browser, go to classroom.google.com or if you're using a phone or tablet, download the Google Classroom app from your relevant app store. Please ensure you sign out of all accounts, otherwise Google will try and revert to your default or personal email if you've already accessed the Google application. The email address you'll be using will be in the following format. Your initial followed by your surname at dlas.ac.uk, which stands for Down into Learning and Skills. Sign in using your new email address with a default password contained in your welcome email. I've created an account, a temporary one called Chris Smith. Next, accept Google's terms and conditions. Have a read through and then click accept. If there's anything you're unsure about, then please contact your tutor. You'll now need to create your own password. Passwords need to be at least eight characters long contain uppercase and lowercase, letters, number, and also a symbol such as the hashtag. Next, you'll be asked to protect your account. You don't need to do this at this stage. If you click update, you'll need to put in your own mobile phone number and it will allow you to reset your password if you get locked out. But for now, you can simply click confirm. and then continue to go to Google Classroom. Next, click I'm a student, and here you'll see your Google Classroom dashboard. Waiting for us is the Maths Made Easy, Easy course. Click join to join the Google Classroom. The first page you'll see will be the stream. On the stream, you'll see your tutor's name, the title of the course, and a link to Google Meet, but we'll discuss that shortly. The stream also contains all notifications, such as assignments that are being set or messages from your tutor or classmates. You can reply to these, or you can simply click on them to see the work. You can also put your own comment in. So for now, if you click share something with your class and type a simple welcome message and post it. Next, we have the classwork tab. The Classwork tab contains materials and assignments that your tutor has set you that need completing throughout your course. The assignments are usually broken down into weeks so that you can see when you need to do something. And your tutor may also schedule something so they don't all appear at once. There'll also be something like documentations, which gives you the Google Meet policy, which are the rules that you need to adhere to when joining a video conference. There'll also be the individual learning plan, the individual learning plan, along with most of your assignments, will be in the Google Docs format. This is an alternative to Microsoft Word, and it means that you don't need to purchase Microsoft Office for your own computers. If you're using a smartphone or a tablet, however, you will need to download the Google Docs application from the App Store. But don't worry, it's free. Google Docs is pretty similar to Microsoft Word. However, what you'll notice is that every time you make a change, at the top, it's automatically saving. This is a fantastic feature, as it means that you never have to worry about losing any work. For instance, if you're on a train and you're completing an assignment and you go through a tunnel and lose your internet, when you come out the other side, it'll be right there where you first had it. Your individual learning plan will need completing by yourself and your tutor throughout your course. So for now, you can simply put your learner name, what you'd like to learn from the course, details of any child, if it's a family learning course, what you would like to do, and then the rest of it will be completed by your tutor at a later date. But again, you don't need to do anything with this other than fill it in as it will be getting saved for every time you do anything. 
And once you've finished with it, you simply close the window. Assignments work in a similar way. Your tutor will set you your own personal document that you need to edit, but they may also attach a PDF or a presentation file as well, which you can view. When you're ready, you'll open up the document and you'll complete the work that's been asked of you. And I'm going to do one that's incorrect here. Once you've finished your work, at the top of the screen you'll see the Turn In button. Click Turn In to submit your work to your tutor. You'll then be asked to confirm that you are going to send your own personal document to the tutor. As long as you're happy, you can click Hand In now. Your work has now been handed in and you can see by the title up here and it also gives you the option to unsubmit if you weren't quite happy with it, you can edit it again. Once your tutor has marked your document, you'll be notified and you'll see that when you come back to the assignment, you'll see that it is now changed to marked. Using another one of these temporary learners, I can show you what it will look like. If you click view assignment, you'll see that there's a comment here and the grade that you've got. If I open up the document, And I can see that my tutor has marked all of the questions and on the one that I got wrong they've put a comment there to show that I had to do it a different way. And I can change this and hand it in again by turning it in again. And then it may get remarked and I might get a higher score. So that's how your assignments work. And they will form the assessment criteria throughout your course so that everything is done online, you can see all of your feedback and all of the points will add up, hopefully, to achieving your aims at the end of the course. Next, we have the People tab. The People tab will list for teachers and classmates in your class. And you can contact your teacher directly by simply clicking on the email notification, and that will send them an email to their Gmail account, which is part of a Dan's and Lear Learning and Skills login. Finally, I'd like to show you the Google Meet. The link in the description will take you to your tutor's current meeting session. And in here you can video conference with or without your camera on, either one-to-one -one or as a group. You will only be able to access this though when your tutor is in. And they will post a message in the stream saying when this meet is going to go live. Click on the link and it will open up Google Meet in a separate window. Here you can choose to turn your camera off and also mute your microphone. I always recommend muting your microphone when you first join, just in case there's more than five people, in which case it will be very noisy. Click join now and you'll see that there are other people in this call already. When there are only a few of you, you will each have a screen so that you'll be able to see who's talking and who is in here. When it gets a bit more crowded, you can go to the top icon here and click on the people and it will show you who's actually in the room. If you're muted, you can simply click on the screen and the bar will pop up and you can click on the microphone button so that you can talk. But only talk at relevant points, otherwise this may disrupt the flow of the lesson. You've also got the chat window. You can turn on chat to ask questions or reply to questions that have been asked. You have captions, so that if you can't hear anything, you can click on this and everyone talking will be displayed as subtitles at the bottom of the screen. Your tutor may also be presenting their screen. You can do the same if you only if you're asked to. For instance, you might be working on something and you're unsure of how to do the next step. The tutor will ask you in a one-to-one -one scenario to present your screen and you can then show them what it is you're stuck on. Once you've finished, you simply hang up the call and leave. That is a quick overview of Google Classroom and Google Meet. I hope it's been of use to you, and when you join your tutor's own class, they'll be able to go through a few things with you as well, but this shall just get you going. 
Hopefully, this will give you a little insight into what Google Classroom is all about. If you have any other questions, you can contact your tutor. They will show you around their own classroom once you join the course. And if you have any technical difficulties, then you can ring us or email us on details at the end of this video. Thank you.